All right, good morning. Thank you everyone for joining. Uh, thank you to our students and classes and extra special thank you to both of our speakers that are here today. Uh, we'll get started in just a moment, but welcome to our second season of Career Ed Talks. My name is Kelly Tholley. I'm a career specialist in the Career and Technical Education Department, and I am joined by my counterpart, Brandy. Uh, Brandy Fulgham is also a career specialist here in our department. So please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions involving career or career prep. Uh, that's what we are here to do. And if we don't know the answer, we'll get you in touch with the right person. Um, this season for Career Ed Talks, we decided to focus on employability skills. In Southwest Florida, there have been many workforce development reports that have come out and businesses have expressed that the one thing they really see lacking from students is the professional skills. So those employability skills, sometimes they're called foundational or soft skills. So those those skills that are transferable across all careers. So it doesn't matter if you are going into hospitality or construction, these are basic employability skills that are necessary for it, being in the workplace and being productive in the workplace. Um, so this season, uh, we are going to focus on those specific skills rather than the specific career fields. We did those for season one. And if you want to check out those videos, you can go to our YouTube channel. Uh, it is Adult and Career Education for Lee County Public Schools. So you can search and, and find that. Um, it's also included in the flyer that was sent out for the Career Ed Talks. And if you still can't find it and you want to get a hold of, of that YouTube channel, you can send me an email. Email, uh, Kelly, K E L L Y K T at leeschools.net. So, thank you all for being here. Thank you for watching if you're watching after the fact. Um, and we are excited to start season two of Career Ed Talks. So, today's topic is professionalism and ethics. So, we have uh, a couple of professionals here with us today, and they're going to share. Um, about those two topics, hopefully give you some tips and tricks and ways that you can work to better be a productive uh, teammate in your future employment or even current employment. So these are things that will work for you across the board. So I want to welcome our speakers today. Uh, first of all, we have Melissa Johnson, and she is a coordinator in recruitment for the Lee County Public Schools, and that is in their human resources department. So thank you so much, Melissa, for joining us today. And then secondly, we have Elizabeth Howdigui. Close, close. Uh, I'm so sorry if I messed that up badly. And she is a destination graduation mentor. She is currently stationed at East Lee County High School. So she's got some tips and tricks as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with Melissa. Um, I'm gonna ask you just to give kind of a background of uh, what you studied, where you studied, what degree certifications you have. Um, tell us a little bit about your career field and that choice. And then we'll we'll move into the other questions after we do brief introductions. So Melissa, we'll start with you. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Kelly, for having me. Hello, everyone. Thanks for being here today. My name is Melissa Johnson, and I'm the coordinator of recruitment for the School District of Lee County's Human Resource Department. Um, so I am a born and raised in Ohio, actually, and I got my bachelor's degree from the University of Toledo in Middle Childhood Education English. Um, I then came to Florida because there were lots of teaching jobs available and there weren't any in Ohio at the time. So I taught for probably about four years and then I decided to go back to school and get a master's degree in education, media design and technology. Um, that's when I caught, I think, the technology bug. I, I love teaching English, don't get me wrong, but I really fell in love with technology um, and because it was advancing so much and we could utilize it in our lesson plans um, tremendously. So I then decided to work towards a business education certification so that I could teach digital design, web design, yearbook, um, creative photography, all those fun classes at the high school level. Um, so I did pass business education and that opened doors for me to go teach at Estero High School in Ida Baker. Um, in addition to my degrees, I also have a yellow belt and green belt Six Sigma certification. Um, that's your project management problem solving type techniques. And I do have my Adobe InDesign. It may be 
lapsed. I might need to retake that sometime soon. <laughs> um, but I, at the point when I was teaching about eight years ago, I had all of my Adobe certifications in InDesign, Illustrator, um, Photoshop. Um, and I, and I loved getting those certifications. They were challenging at first, but then once you got the hang of it, you know, I really enjoyed them and they were great resume builders for me. Um, so I taught for eight years. Like I said, I taught English language arts, and then I moved over to digital design at the high school level. And then I found a position here at the district office that fit my needs as a new mom. Um, it was in Fort Myers and not over the bridge in Cape Coral, but I, there was a CTE teacher on assignment position that opened up and I thought this would be a good change for me. Um, I found that I loved helping teachers and that's your number one role in this um, teacher, teacher on assignment role. You help teachers and to get those emails that, you know, thank you so much for helping me with this assignment or this certification or this PLC. It was very gratifying to me. Um, and so I was in CTE for about four years. And then about two years ago, I joined Human Resources. And it was actually by complete accident. Um, I wasn't searching for a new role, but I knew that I was ready for a challenge. Um, four years in CTE, I felt like I had learned a lot and I was enjoying myself, but I really wanted to try something new and be challenged. And so this human resources role called the recruitment coordinator opened up and I thought, let's, let's give it a whirl. Um, it's an administrator role and I was extremely nervous um, interviewing for this position. I practiced like in the mirror and in the car all the time, um, but I landed the position and I absolutely love it. I get to work with um, a great team. We recruit new teachers, um, te uh, new students from you know, local colleges and universities. We go to recruitment events. I work on internship placements of those FSW and FGCU students who are here locally. I also work on scholarships for the Grow Your Own Scholarship um, teacher, I'm sorry, Grow Your Own Scholarship program that we have. And it's it's been an act, it's, Sorry, I'm losing my train of thought here. It's, it's been a wonderful experience. I've really thoroughly enjoyed it. Again, it goes back to, I love helping others. So when I get that email from a candidate, I landed this job, thank you so much. Um, it really, it warms my heart. I like to play matchmaker. I like to listen to my hiring manager and my candidates and find them the job that best fits their needs. So here I'm in HR um, and I love it. And that is pretty much everything from I guess, beginning of my career until now. But thank you for the time. Thank you so much, Melissa. And you brought up a lot of really good points. I think that you started your career thinking one direction. And as you got into education, you found that there are multiple different pathways um, within that field. So I know sometimes students, when you think, oh, education, that's a teacher or principal, or you think uh, healthcare, that's a doctor or a nurse. Um, research a little bit more because there's other jobs within those larger organizations, um, especially with healthcare or education. If you're talking about a larger organization, they almost operate as a small city. So they do have their different departments uh, with pe people with different strengths might find something that they enjoy doing that, you know, you might enjoy healthcare. That doesn't mean you have to be a doctor. You could also go into IT for a healthcare system. So there's multiple job pathways within uh, specific careers and interest. So keep that in mind. You don't have to choose one way. You can, you can change your mind whenever you want to. So let's go ahead and go over to Liz. Um, same thing for you. Just give us a little bit of your, your background and how you got to where you are, what degrees and certifications you have. Okay, well, I'm not as experienced or <laughs> as accomplished as Melissa, so I'm following up on that one. But um, my name is Elizabeth Howdy. I am the destination graduation mentor for East Lee County High School, but I actually work for Career Source Southwest Florida. That is the workforce development board in our area. We span the five counties of Charlotte Lee, Collier, um, Charlotte Lee, Glades, and Henry. So um, I actually am from this area. I grew up in Immokalee, which is about, what, 30 minutes away from Lehigh, Fort, Fort Myers area. Um, and I actually went to Immokalee High School. I graduated there and decided, and I went off to college. I went to the University of South Florida, go Bulls, um, and studied business. That's, that's, what, I, that's what I did. That's, um, I have my bachelor's in that. Once I graduated, I kind of sort of knew that I wanted to use my business, I guess, you know, what the knowledge that I had gained in, um, 
in college, but I, I, I've, I've always been a helper. I've always had a, a social service bug in me. So um, I actually started um, working for a provider of the Workforce Development Board, helping at-risk youth that had been dropout or, or graduate since then. And I, and I went back to Immokalee and did that for a couple of years. Um, so I was helping them with employability skills, resume building, interviewing, uh, post-secondary education planning, career planning, I mean, you name it, everything under the sun. Um, and that's, and I thought that was a good mixture of both of my, both of my sides, what I learned in school and what I really had a passion for, which was helping the at-risk youth in the community that I grew up in. So I did that, like I said, I did that for a few years and then I, um, after I felt pretty good with that, I decided to um, go on to a different aspect of the board. Another program that they offer was work, which was working with adults. So kind of sort of what I was doing with youth, I was now doing with adults. Um, so when I kind of sort of started was when the big recession happened. So a lot of um, employed adults who had been in the healthcare industry and the construction industry and, and everything um, were now without work. So they had to be retrained and they had to go back to school. So I assisted with that. I did that for a few years and then I decided that youth was where my heart is. And then eight years ago, I landed in Destination Graduation, which was a program that it's an initiative by the Workforce Board that started, I think, 12 years ago. And it was really being proactive and seeing all the needs and seeing everything that we had seen from the other side and kind of sort of being reactive when young adults were coming through our doors and not knowing how to do resumes, not knowing how to fill out job applications, not knowing how to properly dress and what was professionalism and how to properly conduct yourself in an interview, we decided to be proactive and started the destination graduation program to help the in-school youth, the 16 to 18 year olds or 14 to 18 year olds within different high schools. And that's what I've been doing for the past eight years. So I take in my little group at Eastleigh County high school and I work on those employability skills with them. I work to give them work readiness skills, um, give them summer employment and work experiences so they get an idea of what the world of work is like and what is expected of them. So foundational skills are extremely important. I do that all day, every day. <laughs> so um, teaching them about the foundational skills, teaching about the soft skills, the importance of all that. Um, and that's basically what I do in a nutshell. Um, I don't know what will be after that. I am pursuing a master's in business and should be completed by the end of the year. And am ready to see where that opens, what doors that opens within my current organization and maybe outside ones and see you know, how I can use all my experience and all my passion for helping um, individuals, but especially youth, um, helping them accomplish their goals and what kind of leadership positions that's available to me. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. And what an amazing program uh, that's offered here for, for some of our students within Lee County. Um, Liz, you touched on a couple of really good things that I just want to um, come back to for our students and especially talking about your continuing learning and professional development. And that's, that's huge. Um, students, as you find your career, learning doesn't stop there. Um, especially if you want to further yourself, move up and through the company, um, you'll probably have to continue with education and professional development. And I think that plays into my second point, which is it's important to find something that you enjoy doing. So yeah, it's nice to make a lot of money, but it would be even nicer to make some money, but also making that doing something that you love um, and that you're going to want to pursue other opportunities um, and, and more learning and more experience. So I love that you talked about combining, you know, what you had experience with, but also your passion. And that's really what we want our students to eventually find is what are you good at and uh, what do you enjoy and finding something that fits in both of those buckets. Um, I want to make sure also to give a shout out to our friends over at the Foundation for Lee County Public Schools. I see Jonathan and Stella, you're on here. So thank you so much for helping with, with these career ed talks as well and for supporting us here in CTE. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with today's topics. So professionalism, uh, when you look up in the dictionary, professionalism is explained as uh, a skill or competency that's expected of a professional. Um, and then our other topic is ethics and ethics is, is a, our moral principles 
that govern a person's behavior or the conducting of an activity. So a lot of times businesses will have a code of conduct that they have set, and that is uh, the professional code of ethics, but then people also have a personal code of ethics. So we're going to touch on both of those. Um, and then within professionalism, things like being reliable, setting high standards, and really showing that you care about your job and uh, that you are appreciative of that job and that you almost respect yourself. The more professional, the more professionalism that you show shows that you respect yourself and your, your job. So um, let's uh, talk about professionalism first. So we'll start with Liz. Um, just kind of describe to you what you think professionalism means. I think professionalism for me and what I've, with my experience and what I, I try to instill with my kids is just acting appropriately each and every day. And for the occasion, I always tell them there's a place and time for everything. But in the workplace, um, there, is, there is a standard. Um, there is a standard and professionalism is that, is to act appropriately, being respectful, being on time, and just really tr just being, just doing your best. You're not always gonna get it right. You're not, a, we're, we're all human, no one's infallible. You're gonna make mistakes and that's fine. But I always tell them, I don't wanna see the same mistake twice. So I think professionalism for me is just, you know, what I said, just being appropriate, being timely and just being honest and just trying your best. Thank you. Melissa, same question. What does professionalism mean to you and within your field um, what does professionalism look like? All right, Liz had a great answer. So I have to follow her amazing answer. Um, professionalism is being your best self. Okay, in the workplace, you know, you're going to have challenging days, you're going to have easy days. I mean, every day is going to be different, but you always have to be your best self. Always, you know, put one foot forward. Um, ask questions, like Liz said. It's so important to make sure you are continuing to learn and, and show your employer that, you know, your willingness to, to learn. Um, but again, being your best self, you're, you're, especially I'm in HR and I feel like I need to represent the Lee County School District as a whole, you know, and, and with that being said, you know, you know, when you leave your office, yes, it's also important to maintain professionalism, you know, when you're socializing and when you're on social media. Um, so just really thinking about that overall picture of how you're going to present yourself and being your best self all the time. Um, you know, just, just remember, you know, there's, there's so many um, different avenues, you know, on social media nowadays where people can post things that could get them in trouble. And I, and I hear about it in HR. So just remember, just make good decisions, be your best self. Remember, you know, there, there are people who are going to be looking up to you, whether you know it or not. And that's so important. Um, so yes, just being your best self all the time. Thank you. And Melissa brought up social media. I think that's something that we definitely need to touch on, uh, especially with high school students, college students, even for adults. Social media is such a huge part of our lives. So what can our students do to prepare themselves for future careers now uh, in regard to their social media and relation to being professional? So I'll throw it out there to either one of you, whoever wants to take that one. I don't mind going first on this because in HR, I will tell you, we look at your social media. So when you're applying to a, a specific position, your employer is going to look on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. You know, we want to know um, who you are, what you have to offer. What do you share with others? Um, is it appropriate? Is it inappropriate? So keep in mind that social media is huge nowadays in terms of hiring because we do really look at it. Um, so again, just being very cautious what you post, be very cautious you know, on anything you like. Um, I know hiccups happen. You might like something and then you might, oh, I clicked the wrong button. You know, I understand that happens, like life happens. But just again, being very cautious on social media because your employers or future employers do look at it. Thank okay. you. For social media, for my students, it's <laughs> social media, like just like Melissa said with, with HR, they look at everything. Um, employers want to get a sense of who you are completely. Who are you? Not only professionally, like when you know when someone's watching you and when you know when 
when you're supposed to be on your best behavior, but also who you are when you don't think anybody's watching you. And I think that's kind of sort of what character and social media, and, I, and we all have personal lives, we all have social lives, we, we all have our friends and we all, like I, but I said, there's a time and place for everything. But I think what the most important thing is that once you put something out there, and I always tell my students, once you put a certain picture or you put a post or something out there, you can't necessarily bring it back. Like I tell my daughter, you can't untoast the toast. <laughs> Once you toast it, it's it's toasted. Like, and it's really, really hard. And as you get older and you start thinking more about your career and what you want to do and how you want to be viewed as a person, as a professional, those things matter. Those things really, really matter. So absolutely being cautious and being mindful. And, and we all mature and change. And I'm sure I wasn't who I am now is who I wasn't 10 years ago. But being just trying to be your best self and really keeping, just really keeping focused on, on where you want to be and who you want to be and who and how you want others to view you is, is extremely, extremely important. And all, all employers, even, even when I'm assisting students at my level and, and a student comes to me and says they want to be part of my program or an administrator or a teacher recommends a student for my program because I am very selective. I even look at their social media and that's just me. Like I'm not hiring them. I'm not like doing anything like that, but I'm looking at, so I want to see who this kid is. I want to get a picture. I want to get a feel. I want to understand them. And I look at that. I not only, I don't only look at grades. I don't only look at referrals. I don't only look at attendance. I, I want to see who you are as a complete person. And that's, and Social media is that double-edged sword. It, it 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 can it can make you, or it can it it can it can really really like make it harder for you. So it's either one or the other, and it and it's with a lot of things. So it's very very important for um, students and young adults just to keep that in mind. Very good advice. Um, just being mindful, exactly thinking thinking ahead and ask yourself, what is this going to portray of me if I put this on my social media? And even think of uh, what would happen if a future employer saw that, because it is very possible that they probably will. Um, and if, if you're wanting to post things or um, show things to your friends, then check your privacy settings, make sure certain things are not available for the public to be able to see so that a future employer wouldn't be able to look those things up. Um, it does follow you. And like Liz said, we understand that you can change over time. That happens and probably you should um, as you learn and you grow. Uh, but keep those things in mind now because the employers will be checking those things out. So thank both of you for those good, good tips. Um, speaking about professionalism, how are you able to acquire that skill? Is there something that our students can do to help uh, prepare them a little bit better to be more professional um, does it take practice? Is it something that comes easily? Is it something that can be learned? Um, I'll go ahead and throw that out to either of you. Um, I'll go first in this one. Absolutely. I don't, I don't, we're, we're not all born professional. I don't, I don't think that, you know, we don't, not some of us have that genetic makeup and some of us don't. Uh, like anything else, I think professional can, can be learned. It's relatively easy. There's, um, there's a lot of information out there. You can always Google it. Um, Career Source offers a variety of um, of workshops and just different, I guess, just just different workshops on being professional and what's expected of you and and how to conduct yourself appropriately. And like how we said, professional professionalism is just putting your best foot forward. We all know what that is. We all know how we want to be perceived and. And what's the best way to do that? We all know right from wrong. We all know that, you know, showing up on time is not acceptable. Using foul language in a workplace, not acceptable. And those are the things that are professionalism. We all are professional. What, what you're expected to conduct yourself appropriately. A big one for, for me and, and what I share with my kids all the time and what I expect of them is their attitude. Their attitude, just waking, just being positive, having that good mindset, going in there with a smile on your face and you wouldn't imagine what, what can that can do for your whole mood? What can that do for your day? And what can that do moving forward? Um, employers that I've worked with in the past who take on my students and give them those work experiences 
attitude and teamwork are what they always tell me they want to see from 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 the young adults or from anybody they hire that that's what you know they need to know that this individual can work with others can communicate appropriately can and have a positive attitude about it can take criticism you know we all make mistakes and sometimes we may not like it and you know when when somebody says well you could have done this better or you could have done this differently or maybe you know but that attitude is what will get you um what will get you farther all right, nice. And attitude is a choice. You you choose the attitude you want to have. Mm -hmm. Melissa? So I do think professionalism can be learned. And I think as you are all young adults, um, you may or may not have a role model in your life or a mentor already. I highly recommend, you know, if you have a teacher or a neighbor or a family member, um, to ask those questions, um, you know, keep, maintain that close relationship with that person because you're going to learn from them. Um, it comes down to being coachable, okay? If a candidate um, or if, if as you young adults are learning through life, you know, you have to understand and continue to learn and be coachable. Employers are opening, open to hiring, you know, individuals who may not have the skill set. Um, but we can coach you through that skill set, which is huge. Um, be able to take constructive criticism, and maybe that's from your mentor, your role model, or, or your employer. Um, that is important because you're only going to grow from that criticism. You need to digest it. You need to understand what mistakes you made and move forward making different decisions and, you know, working on those mistakes and improving yourself. Um, but yes, I think professionalism can be learned and it goes, it goes back to maintaining great relationships with your role models or your mentors, um, being coachable, continuing to learn, okay? Being, having the willingness to learn, okay? That is huge. Um, and those are my thoughts on professionalism and, and learning. Very, very good points. Um, I see another uh, pattern that's coming up from last season is mentors, finding someone to have in your life that can be completely honest with you and you also being able to accept that constructive criticism because that's the best way to do a little bit of self-check and then also have someone keep you in check as well um, and make sure that professionalism is still there. Uh, so finding a mentor is very, very important, even as you continue throughout your career um, having someone that you can bounce ideas off of and be completely open and honest with is, is really important. Um, let's switch gears. Uh, Liz had talked about knowing the difference between right and wrong. So that's where ethics kind of comes into this discussion with professionalism. Um, so can you, let's just do an overview of what ethics means to you and any tips or tricks that you have for students because this one could be a little bit harder to describe. Uh, People have personal ethics, which is their own personal beliefs, but then a business usually also has their code of conduct uh, that are the ethics they follow. And those personal ethics may not agree with the professional ethics. So let's discuss that a little bit. Um, and either one of you can start. So yeah, ethics and right from wrong. Um, it's definitely I we all have our own personal beliefs and the ways we were raised in our culture and um, those things are something that I hold very, very highly to myself. Um, my company's code of conduct is definitely doing the right thing, not only not only by the, the job seeker or the youth or the employee, but also by the employer, we, we, we are, we are, we want to do the best for both um, so that that. Um, that sometimes causes a little bit of an issue and sometimes in the workplace when um you're trying to follow your company's ethics versus your own ethics they're 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 um sometimes there might be a misalignment and and causes some issues but what what's worked for me and what i've always held on to is um i always want to know that i did the right thing for me and, and I, and as long as I know that I, I did correctly and I know that I can back up my decision and I know that I can, I can hold my head up high and I, and I have nothing to regret, then, um, then I'm good. Then I, I stand by my decision, but I always try to do what's best for everyone involved as well. I don't ever try to purposefully or 
uh, mindlessly do something that I know it's not correct. I don't know if that kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I think it's that little voice that's inside you that says like, okay, this is the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do. And then being able to go to sleep at night with not having a guilty conscience and Absolutely. knowing you did the right thing. Well, as long as you can do that, then I think that's what ethics is and just making sure that you stand by your decision 100%. Right, right. Thank you. Melissa, anything to add? Sure. So for me personally, ethics is... Um, it's being a rule follower. That's just who I am. Um, whether I'm in, you know, for work, home, everything, being a rule follower. I'm a mom. I want to make sure my kids know, you know, that following the rules and wearing our seatbelts and, you know, using um, appropriate language, you know, I, I feel like it's so important. Um, and even more so too with our schools, with our administration, and even our teachers, we have a lot of eyes on us. Okay. Young minds. And they are, are watching every single thing that we do, which is so important. Um, so we have to maintain our professionalism. We must follow that code of conduct, okay? I know not everyone's perfect and you know we need to have some grace, but at the same token, you know, we are growing these young learners into adults and we want them to be just as, just as successful as we are today. Um, so I think it's just so important to maintain professionalism, be a role model, be a leader. Um, and at the end of the day, like Kelly said, you know, can you go to bed knowing, you know, I've made all the right decisions and, and you don't have that guilty conscience and, and knowing that you did the right thing. Thank you. I think it's important to find uh, a, a career that you're personal ethics matches up pretty closely with the professional ethics. And I think that that comes into finding something that you really enjoy doing. Um, those are probably going to be in pretty close alignment if you're, if you're focusing on finding a job that you enjoy doing. Um, what about, so I know I'm a learner by hearing non-examples. So do either of you have any good stories that would teach um, through a non-example of professionalism or ethics. Just like an instance where I, I learned about professionalism and ethics, like not on the workplace, like a personal example. Um, or through someone that you had been coaching. Um, like an example that we heard from our director was someone had applied for a job um, Brandy knows the story, and they were to go work on the beach, um, cleaning up trash. That was the job that they'd applied for, the job they were hired for. It was through um, a company that that's what they do. They, they clean up on the beach. Um, this employee that was just hired uh, took that to mean that he could show up to work on the first day in his swim trunks and flip flops. <laughs> so that is a non-example of professionalism. <laughs> Um, always check to see what your dress code is for your employer. Um, any stories like that that either of you have? Well, I don't have one that's quite as amusing, but um, a couple of years ago, uh, like I said, part of my component of my program is the, the summer work experience. So I, um, for the kids, it's not, it's not a mandate, it's not required, but for the students who um, would like to participate in and want that work experience and those work readiness skills and be in a situation where they can apply those, those professionalism ethics and all those other things, um, I give them that experience. So um, and it was the first time that I had worked with this employer. And um, I know and this particular young lady really wanted to work in that, in, in that setting. So I said, okay, if, if you really want to work in that setting, let me reach out to some employers in the area that work in that industry and let me see what I can find. Well, I did find a gentleman who accepted and was all gun ho about taking my students, loved the program, loved what it was about, loved, wanted to give back to the community and helping these kids. Um, everything was going great. You know, I, I got good reviews, monitoring was great on her last day. And I remember, I can remember like it was yesterday and it was like five years ago. On her last day, I got a phone call um, from the employer and it said that they had caught her on camera stealing from the cash register. I about died. I about died and felt like 
I, I, I didn't have the words. I, I felt like nothing. I, I felt like there wasn't enough apology for me to give to, to this, to this employer. Um, and the sad thing was, is like, he, he honestly told me, cause she had done great all seven weeks. She, she had been an exemplar employee. He loved her. She, she, she was there timely. She had a positive attitude. She was willing to be coachable and work and learn. He told me I would have hired her permanently. I would have offered her a permanent job the next day if she hadn't done that. And so it just goes to show like about somebody's always watching and doing the right thing and being professional and having those ethics. And I'm like, she was getting part of my, my students get paid a salary as to, um, to show them, you know, they, they put in their 40 hours, they get paid an hourly salary, they do a timesheet, all those things, giving them that setting and that professional, that professional experience and showing them what the world of work is really like. Um, and all of that work, all of her, all of her effort went down the drain in, in in just one instance and in one mistake and mm -hmm. when i spoke to her about it she was extremely sorry she repaid the money and i said you 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 just severed a bridge not only for you but for me i said because now he's thinking i said not only for me but for the other students in my program because now he's going to be thinking that every single one of my students does that and and that is not and it's completely not true it's completely um, not true. So that that goes back to that professionalism, that ethics, knowing right from wrong, always doing it. And she ruined a great opportunity for her. Who who knows what that could have, what that could have led to, and what could it have been, and what she could have learned. Um, so definitely, just making sure that you're always appropriate and always stick to your ethics and doing what's right is it's it's what's most important. Yeah, and doing what's right all the time, even when you think nobody is watching, um, because in this instance, someone was watching and, and she didn't know. Um, so it's always doing the right thing and, and realizing that there's a domino effect for the choices that you make. Um, she made, yeah, it was one bad choice, but it was a really, really bad choice. And, and now that employer will question anytime your school has students that wants to work there. So um, definitely a domino effect. And that's, I think that's what, that's what happens with ethics. Once you do it once, once you break the rules once, once you get, even if you get away with it, even if she would have gotten away with it, I think it is a domino effect. And it, it, I think it starts bleeding into other parts of your life. Once you think, okay, well, I can do this here and I, then you can get away with it somewhere else and somewhere else. And I think then you just become, it just, you become a person that just, you might not really like just because you, you, you've done those things. Right. And it goes back to being able to sleep at night. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that story. Melissa, anything? Yeah, so I'm going to combine some situations into one. So I think um, what example I'm going to share is when you have an employee who may not be getting along with their team members or their leaders, um, their managers, administrators, um, and, and the behaviors that we see is when they stop attending meetings. Um, their body language shows that they're uninterested. Um, lack of communication, where you know they they don't respond to your emails or your phone calls. Um, just that lack of professionalism in general. It's it shows then the manager that you know a you're closed minded. Also, you're defiant because you're not following processes. Um, and, and I think what needs to be conveyed to some of these um, employees um, or, or the individuals with these types of behaviors, um, that you need to be honest with yourself and your employer. If you're not happy, um, you, you need to vocalize that because you're also bringing everyone else down when you're displaying these very negative professional behaviors. Um, you know, sometimes a new location with a new set of managers and, you know, administrators will work. I've, I've had to do this with some of my interns where it's just not working out. You know, they're not gelling with their cooperating teacher or at the school. And I, I we, we, we start a fresh start and we work on a plan for these um, teacher candidates. But, you know, it doesn't always work out for the best, but sometimes it does. So I think it's just not being closed minded, but being open minded knowing you may have to agree to disagree with some of the different um, expectations of you, but you know those negative professional behaviors, if you're gonna start off on that foot, it's not gonna give you a great name and reputation. 
Um, so, you know, always, again, going back to putting your best self forward um, and being honest with your employer. Um, and remember, you know, a lot of jobs nowadays, you're working on a team and you need to be a team player. Thank you. Yeah. Um, that brings up, you know, a lot, being a team player, being able to be coachable and um, a, being able to agree to disagree. Not everybody around you has to feel the same way that you do. Um, <clears throat> and so I think awesome, so very, very important. So thank you for that, Melissa. That was a really good example. Uh, I heard also some topics coming up about the employer ethics. So you as the employee, yes, you are responsible for following those those ethics and code of conduct and being professional, but your employer as well. So I know for our high school students, um, if you're in an internship or in OJT, we require you to review the child labor laws and take a child labor law quiz. And that's not just for us to give you an assignment. That is for you as a student to be able to advocate for yourself. Uh, if your employer is not following those child labor laws, now you have been given the knowledge and, and the power to speak up and say, listen, I know my rights. I know what the laws are and, and you're not following that. So your employer also has some ethics and some responsibility that they need to follow. Um, but it's important that you as the employee know what those, those code of conducts are and those ethics are. Um, any other tips or tricks or pieces of advice or knowledge that you would like to share with our students regarding professionalism, ethics. Um, and, and it's so hard with employability skills because so many of them overlap. So we could very easily go down the rabbit hole of communication and how to talk to your boss versus your teammates. Um, but anything with the overarching idea of professionalism and ethics. Kelly, can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah, definitely. This is also a good time. Students, if you have questions, teachers, if you have questions. This is for Melissa. Melissa, um, my students right now are working on their resumes and cover letters. I'll even, I'll um, to see they're on the computers right now. But um, my question to you is this, we've done some research and the research, um, some of the people are starting to put pictures on their resume and they're being really creative with them and they don't look like the normal old school resume. When you get these resumes in there and I was wondering if you would ever be willing maybe to block out a name and send me some examples of some really good resumes that you've gotten. Um, and is the career summary really important? Um, where you tell a little bit about yourself at the top of the resume, or is that sort of going by the wayside? To be honest with you, we some websites will say one thing, another website will say another. So what, what in your um, experience are you finding that most principals or leaders are liking to see in a resume? Or does it really just depend on their age? If they're youthful, they'll like the picture, or if they're older, they want old school. Great questions, Kevin. Um, you're right. Resumes are changing today. I do see pictures a lot from the younger generation, and I, I do appreciate it. It's nice to have a name with a face or a face with a name. I'm sorry. Um, but a career summary. So I feel as if you don't have a lot to put on your resume in terms of experience or certifications um, and skills that you might have. It, I don't think it hurts to put a career summary on there because you don't want to have a resume that doesn't have you know, information on it for the hiring manager. Um, I, I like simple resumes, easy to follow. I like your most in, um, recent employer experience at the top so that I'm not searching in this you know, document to figure out, okay, who do they work for now? I can't figure this out. There's all these different, you know, um, dates that are all over the place. Um, so I like simple, clear. I don't mind a picture. That's completely fine. Um, and I will tell you now, you know, today's interviewing is different. We're doing a lot of virtual interviewing. So the resumes that we do receive ahead of time, we do really look at because we're not, we're not going to be with this candidate one-on-one. -on -one. Um, 
at least for now, like we're not, we're not doing a lot of in-person interviews. Um, but this year with our past teacher recruitment fair, we even had candidates videotape themselves for two minutes on their phone and update that little snippet um, as they applied to our recruitment fair. And principals loved it. They love the personal touch. So um, I kind of went all over the place here with this, but I think it's so important to a, keep it nice and simple and clean and organized, easy to read, easy font. Career summary, again, I'm sure I can see why you're seeing mixed research because I can, I can live with it or live with it or without it, okay? But I really, truly want to see what this candidate has to offer and the experience that they have. And of course, the picture is a great personal touch. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin, any other questions from your students? Melissa, one last question too is, let's say I'm really looking for someone to partner up with this, this whole resume thing. If I sent you like 10 or 15 resumes from a class, would you ever be willing to say, okay, I would, I would interview these five candidates. I would not, and, and give reasons why you would not do the next five and then the other, the last five, you would say, I would definitely not even look at it because I'm trying to tell my kids, unfortunately, sometimes in life, people are making a decision about you based upon a piece of paper and they know if you don't have the correct experience, but they're still looking at other things in your resume. So um, would you ever be, I'm looking for someone to partner up to do something like that. Absolutely. I'd love to help you. And I have some teammates that could also help as well. So we could pretend like we're the hiring managers or the hiring team. Um, as long as we know exactly, you know, what, what they're applying for. So what position, um, and, and we'll, we'll follow like a, a like a mock process of like the screening, um, rubric to figure out if the, if whoever is going, getting an interview, if they've screened through, the qualifications and we can select those individuals. Um, we'd be happy to do that. I'm up for the challenge. Thank you. We also are going to yeah. do um, another piece of it, some interviews. So maybe mm -hmm. we can have your team it would be wonderful mm -hmm. to partner up with the district and maybe do a, a day where they all come in and they interview my students. It's kind of part of JFG Jobs for Florida graduates. It's a new program here in Lee County. So that might be fun too. No, I'd love to do that. We do mock interviews with our local colleges and universities. So that is something we, we can easily do. Um, I put my email in the chat box. If you want to shoot me an email with your requests, we can plan something for the future. And, and you know, too, it's like most of um, the, I'm finding my interviews, even for my daughter, she was applying for a hospital job. They're all, you were right. They're all being done on Zoom. They, it seems like the first interview now is all done on computer. They don't even want to meet you till they know they're going to hire you. So maybe we can just do that over Zoom with the kids mm -hmm. so they get used to this. Because what's happening is these kids are going into the workforce and they've never had an interview over the computer and they don't, some, they don't know how to act. They don't know the right way to dress or what kind of background, things of that nature. So... Absolutely. And if I can give one piece of advice to your students, if they're listening, dress appropriately for a Zoom interview. OK, even though you're at home and you're comfy. OK, make sure you dress appropriately because we get several people we interview and we're just very disappointed with their appearance because it doesn't look like they're put together and prepared for um, the interview itself. Thank you. You're welcome. Make sure you email me. Uh, that brings up a point with professionalism also is your dress. Uh, there's definitely a difference in business, uh, professional dress and casual dress. So make sure that you're aware. Now, obviously, if, if you're going into a job where you're on a construction site and you're getting dirty, um, you probably don't want to wear some high heels. Um, you'll want your steel-toed boots, but uh, uh, look at what your policies are with your employers and make sure that you're dressing. If you're in an office setting, then professional is what you should be going for. Um, make sure that your, your outfits are appropriate for the job that you will be 
be doing. Um, we were talking about resumes and I want to make sure that we cover for students, there are two different ways that you can do your resume. Melissa was referencing a chronological resume, um, which is usually that's that's kind of the, the typical um, resume setup is where you go with your most current job and then move backwards from there. Um, same thing with your education, uh, listing that. The other type of resume and outline that you can use is skills-based, and that's where you list your careers based on skills. So it kind of depends on who, who the employer is that's hiring you um, and, and how they would probably wish to look at it. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch on, we had talked about uh, employers and maybe not getting along, and Melissa had, had talked about some of the non-examples of non-professionalism um, and, and how that looks in the workplace. Um, always think that your behavior could come back to affect you even years down the line. So employers, when you're going for a new job, they are usually going to do a reference check from your previous employers. So make sure that when you do leave your place of employment, you're even if, if it's not for you, you're not happy, leave in a professional manner. Um, and that means usually giving two weeks notice. Um, don't just walk out of the job that day um, because not only are you affecting you, your maybe manager, but you're also affecting the rest of the team as well. So um, be professional even when you decide that you are ready to move on to something else. Um, because your future employers will call and do reference checks. So your reputation will continue to be there um, and may end up following you. So you want to make sure that you have a good reputation and that goes into ethics and doing what is right and what you feel is, is the, the good thing to do, the right thing to do. Um, all right, I think that we are about finished. Are there any other questions, Kevin, or any last minute pieces of advice, Liz or Melissa, that you would like to share? Remember that question from last year, if they could, if their new self could give their younger self um, any advice, what would it be? Because I can't wait to hear Liz's. Yep, um. if you, yep. <laughs> Exactly. That is my very last question on my list. Okay. If you could talk with your teenage self or your high school self, uh, what would you go back and share? Um, and it can be any, any advice. It can be employability skills, a lesson. What would you share with your teenage high school self? Well, I just want to touch really quickly on the resume for high school students. So like you said about skill set or a fun what we call a functional resume. I do those very much with um, high school students because they don't have as much experience. Yes. So, and I really encourage them when they're looking, if they, they wouldn't have a career summary, Kevin, um, but an objective is always good. Like letting them know what you want and what position and, and what you can contribute. And also if um, just, if you're an athlete, I'm sure you've gained skill sets and leadership roles in that in that aspect. If you are part of a club or active in the community, you can list those on your resume as well. So don't think it only has to do with um, work experience um, or just employment experience because there is um, there's a whole other list of information um, you can put on there. I'm okay with the picture as long as it's appropriate and the email must be appropriate. You you wouldn't believe how many times I've seen I don't know, his princess or something like ridiculous and voicemail. If you're going to put your phone number on there, they're going to call. And if you're not going to answer, they're going to leave a message. And voicemail is very, very important. I don't want to hear the just inappropriate music. I don't want to hear an inappropriate message. I don't want to hear a joke about you. It's hello, hello, and they thinking, because if that's how you're acting, then most likely they think that you're not serious or, or necessarily wanting a, a job like that. Um, so what would I tell um, my high school self? I, I, I was pretty great in high school, Kevin. So I don't know about, I don't know about you, but I was, I was pretty great. Um, I would just, you know, I, I tend to be, I think it, if I could go back and I would be flexible, be just flexible. I, um, life rarely turns out the way you plan it, almost never. Um, um, 
Melissa talked about all her different career changes and career paths, and I've had a few, and I and just and just always be willing and open to learn and grow. You need to step out of that comfort zone. I I was a pretty good student, um, but I was very shy. So stepping out of that comfort zone and just learning and being flexible is is just it it's 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 just it's just it's just needed um and you only get out of something what you put in it so if you're frustrated or you're unhappy either with school or where you workplace that 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 you you need to be able to look and and see what you can change and what you can control of that um and i think that's what that's what i would share with my with my younger self very very good advice thank you so much liz thanks for joining us today Melissa? Yes, and just to piggyback Liz's mention on voicemail, I put in the chat box, make sure your voicemail box isn't full. I can't tell you how frustrating it is when we call and we maybe have a position to offer or we have questions and we can't get a hold of the candidate. It is frustrating. So sometimes we do text because we know that's the new way of communicating, but I'm even guilty of my voicemail being full. I need to do a better job. Um, so if I can give one piece of advice to my younger self, I would say um, to stop and listen a little more and to slow things down. Um, I'll never forget one of my girlfriends told me in high school, Melissa, you're not a very good listener. And I thought, oh my God, <laughs> like that's a horrible thing to say to me. But um, I was always thinking about the next thing. Like my mind is always moving very quickly. And so I'm always trying to think of that next thing to say when I really just need to stop, be present and listen, whether it was with my friends, my friend's parents, um, school, you know, teachers, coaches, just stop and listen, just be present. Don't always be on fast forward and think about the next thing you need to say, because it's a great skill set to have. Um, I think being a great communicator in, in two different ways, being a good listener and also someone who can interact and exchange well is very important. But listening is, is an integral part of also learning. So thank you for having me today. I enjoyed my time. Thank you. Again, more, more good advice. Thank you so much, Melissa, for joining us. Um, and I, I just wanted to come back to the communication, ways of communication, email, that's something that I know as much as we say that to students, if your email address is inappropriate, go on to Gmail and make another one um, with just your first name and last name and, and maybe some numbers at the end, something very simple, very basic, um, nothing that would be inappropriate. And the same thing with your phone message. I know you know, you think, oh, it's my friends that are calling, but it could also be someone in a professional setting that's calling to try to get a hold of you to maybe offer you a job. So um, staying professional and in, in all aspects of life. Um, well, if there's any last minute thoughts, questions, I think we're all good. I'm gonna go ahead and do a very quick screen share. And everyone can see. Awesome. So this is our flyer for this season schedule. Um, as you can see today, we covered professionalism and ethics. And again, I want to thank both of our speakers. This was awesome. Lots of great advice, lots of good tips. Um, next month on November 3rd, we will be talking about etiquette and attire. So those definitely play into professionalism. We're going to dive a little bit deeper into etiquette, attire, give you some tips. Where can you can you learn some more of those, those um, skills? So we'll be speaking with some local business people that uh, focus very heavily on, on etiquette and attire. So it'll be a very good uh, panel for, for students. Hey, hey Kelly, um, want to ask you a favor. Can you go back to that screen of your, um, first of all, thank you. This was really great. And thank you to the panelists. Thanks, Liz. You're great. And Melissa, you were great. Thank you. Um, but my question is, when you do the etiquette and attire one, would you ever be willing or maybe add another one or add it to that of how kids should eat at a business luncheon? Like, yeah. even to the point of what fork to use, I don't know if you could ever do a setting, if they were to go to a business lunch, how to, how to act. Because my kids are going to be going to a business lunch 
in um, a couple months if the COVID lets up and, and I really, that would be really good for them to know. Yeah, yep, I can do a little bit of research now between now and then and, and we'll incorporate that into part of the uh, presentation, so definitely. Um, I also wanna make sure that I mentioned that this year we will be holding mock interviews and reviewing resumes as well. I just spoke with a community member yesterday who is extremely passionate about that. She is now retired. She has worked in the healthcare field um, in HR. So she wanted to give back. So we will be holding probably later on March, April, uh, reviewing resumes and holding mock interviews. We have two dates already set up and I think it was April 5th and 12th, um, but more information will be coming and I'll make sure I show all of you those. One will be via Zoom so that you can practice on Zoom. The other will actually be in person. Um, and thank you to the foundation for Lee County Public Schools. They are providing the location um, for those mock interviews. Um, and then also as part of the district job fair that we'll be holding at the end of the year, that will be a requirement. So please keep that in mind, students, if you want to participate in the district-wide job fair, um, you will be required to do some mock interviews and allow someone from our staff to review your resume um, and give you some tips. It's really just to help you and help prepare you for that process. Um, again, if anyone has any questions, my name is Kelly Thawley. You can email me at kellykt at leeschools.net. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you. Thank you again, Melissa and Liz. You were wonderful. I so appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules. Um, and we will see everyone back on November 3rd. Same Zoom link, same time, Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. So thank you. Thanks for having me. Take care. Thank you.